I'm going to show you proof from the scripture that Jesus actually denied healing to some people. Now, I know in the Gospels that it says in many places, Jesus healed them all. He healed them all. Power was coming from him and healing them all. I don't deny that, but I have contended over the years that he was healing people that came to him in faith. But there are teachers in the body of Christ who will say that the person needing healing does not need to exercise faith. And I, I've rejected that, and I continue to do so, and I'm not alone on that. There are very credible teachers in the body of Christ that agree with me on that. Some people who agree with that teaching that you don't need faith if you need the healing will say things like, what about Lazarus? Lazarus was dead. He didn't exercise faith. That's a very easy one to answer. Lazarus, when he was alive, he lived a life of faith, and faith is a substance that gets into your bones. And we know this also from Scripture because when a dead person was thrown into a cave where the bones of Elisha were, when that dead man touched the bones of Elisha, he came back to life. So you see how that works together? So people were coming to Jesus in faith. In fact, they were willing to go three days without eating. That, that's faith. And Jesus often said, your faith has made you whole or your faith has healed you. And so there, there are arguments on both sides of the issue. And, uh, and I, I guess it's going to continue on all the way to the very end. But the people that are not teaching accurately are going to be held accountable. I'm not saying it's a life or death issue where the person who's teaching wrong is going to go to hell. I'm not saying that. In fact, it's dangerous to make a, pass a judgment like that on anybody. I don't want to do it. I'm just going to keep on teaching what I believe is accurate. And I don't, I don't point out names either. And I'm not, there's, there's plenty of people that teach both sides. So don't any, don't anybody ask me who, <laughs> who are you thinking of? Who are you talking about here? Now, I'm going to show you from the scripture, a portion of scripture that is often overlooked concerning this issue. And it's in Matthew 13. Read all of Matthew 13 because it's an amazing eye-opening chapter. Jesus is talking to a multitude and he's talking to them in parables and he's sharing with them the, the parable of the sower. And afterwards, the disciples say to him, why are you telling them these things in parables? And Jesus actually says to his disciples, he says, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been revealed to you, but not to them. <laughs> so he's, he's, not, he's not giving them the secrets of the kingdom, certain people. He says that the, the, uh, the prophecy of Isaiah, the prophet, is fulfilled in some of these people, where, it's, where Isaiah was saying that these people, they have eyes, but they do not see, ears, but they do not hear. Their hearts are dull. And so Jesus says that I, I speak to them in parables so that they won't understand because of this. And because if they did understand, they would be converted and then I would heal them. It says it right there. What verse is that? It says it in, uh, in verse 15, Matthew 13, verse 15. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. So, so he's, he's telling them parables so that they won't understand and be healed. It's, it's all right there. And then, and then he goes on in chapter 13, Matthew 13, to, sh to share also the parable of the sower, the farmer who sows good seed in his field. And then at night, the enemy comes, an enemy, and the devil, and sows bad seed in the field also. And then the workers then see that, that there's, there's tares growing up with the wheat. And they say to the, to the owner, the, the farmer, should we pull up the tares? And the, and the farmer says, no, no, let them grow together until the harvest. Because otherwise, when you're pulling up those tares, you might pull up the wheat as well. At the harvest... They're going to they're gonna gather all the tares and bundles and throw it into the fire and then gather the wheat in, into the barn. And Jesus is saying that. He's saying that, that, that these tares are the, that from the devil. Jesus sows good seed. 
And so it's so clear. It's quite a chapter. And then even in chapter 13, besides all the parables, he also goes on at the end of the at the end of that chapter, he goes on to talk about the part where he goes to his hometown and he didn't heal many people in his hometown because they didn't, they all knew him. A lot of people knew him. And so they were familiar with him. And so because they were familiar with him saying, isn't this the, the isn't this the carpenter's son? And isn't his mother Mary and his brothers and his sisters are here with us. And they took offense at him. And Jesus said that a prophet is without honor in his hometown. And, and he also said that they didn't believe. It was a lack of belief, a lack of faith. And so he couldn't heal only a few people because of that. And so it's quite an eye-opening chapter. But the main part of that was the beginning where, where Jesus is literally talking to them in parables so that they will not understand and be converted so that he could heal them. It's absolutely amazing. And now let me read also from Romans 11, 1 through 5, because Paul talks about this in a different way, uh, because it can sound as if, because there's other portions of Scripture that say, and I've mentioned it many times, that God loves everyone. He wants everyone to be healed. It's not his will for any man to perish, but for all to come to a knowledge of the truth and so be saved. It's all true, but you got to look at the preponderance of Scripture. You can't eliminate Matthew 13 that I just shared with you. So the answer is that when, when people, if, if people continue believing Satan and serving Satan, they're going to end up in the fire. They're not going to be healed. They're not going to be saved. But there's always a portion of the people of Israel. And, and Jesus is talking about the people of Israel. He's not talking about Gentiles. When he was ministering, he was ministering for the most part to the people of Israel. Only a few Gentiles here and there that exercised faith. All right? That's, that's when he healed them. But in Romans 11, 1 through 5, Paul says this. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against their zero, saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so, then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And so, it's the same thing in every generation. Every single generation from when Jesus was ministering, there are Jewish people. When I say Jewish people, I mean anybody in Israel. Because the word Jew can be used interchangeably. It can mean just the people from the tribe of Judah, or it can mean anybody from any of the tribes. And so uh, every generation has Jewish people who will believe. There's a remnant in every generation, I believe, including in the very last generation before the return of Jesus Christ. And so there's always, and it's, just, it's the same thing with Gentiles. Do all Gentiles believe? No, they don't. So it's it's some from the Jews, some from the Gentiles. The rest harden their hearts. They keep on believing Satan, and they end up in hell. Let's look at something else that Paul wrote to Timothy that is pretty obvious. In a, it's just it's a, it's very it's eye opening, really. If you really if you will listen to these things with an open heart and put aside the teaching that denies any of this and just really look at the scripture yourself, you'll see this clearly. Second Timothy three one through five. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. In verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. That's the last part of verse 5. And from such people, turn away. So Paul is telling this to Timothy. He's not saying, preach the gospel to them and then turn away from them. <laughs> no, that makes no sense. 
He's saying when you, you have to discern, you have to be able to see people and the way they're behaving. And if they're, if they're living like this without repenting, it, it's, it doesn't even talk about telling them to repent. Paul's not even saying that to Timothy. He's saying to Timothy, when you see people that live like this, turn away from them. It's like saying that they're not even getting a chance to hear the gospel or getting a chance to be healed. Now, <laughs> I know that people will contend with that, but it says it right there. So there are people out there that absolutely are serving the devil. They're children of the devil. And Jesus also said it in other places. He said, your father's the devil. How are you going to avoid going to hell? So like, it's, it's all right there in scripture if you're willing to look at it all. And so, yes, indeed, you need to exercise faith to be healed. And that means faith. Faith is the, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's when you, when you live a life of loving God, when you, when you love God and you love your neighbor, you, you forgive. If your neighbor, your neighbor does something wrong to you, you forgive that person. And then you also apologize if you offend somebody else. You're, always, you're doing the right thing in the eyes of God always. And if you do sin, and everybody does, there's nobody that doesn't sin, that you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you're quick to repent and say, Lord, I have sinned. I have missed the mark on that. I repent. I know I'm better than that. And I just, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ and I'm going to leave this behind me now, Lord, and move forward. So you got to have that attitude. Just like David. David was a murderer and an adulterer, and yet God said, this is a man after my own heart. And it's because David, although he made these grievous mistakes, he sinned greatly, for the most part, he didn't practice these things. He practiced loving God and serving him and worshiping the Lord. It's like you look at, read those Psalms. David wrote 72 Psalms, I think it was. It's like just... They're beautiful. It's like my favorite portion of scripture is the Psalms. And so that's really like, David really knew the Lord. And so, so there you go. You have to exercise faith in that. And that's what that is. That's what faith is. And so God bless you. I hope that you are willing to look at the scripture from this perspective. Because if you believe the wrong perspective, you're going to be held accountable. And again, I'm not saying that you're, you're going to hell. I'm not going to pass a judgment on anybody. The Bible says, do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Give, extend mercy and you will receive mercy. So I'm just saying it's very dangerous teaching to teach inaccurately. I take it very seriously. Now, one more thing before I go, and I've mentioned this in the previous couple of videos, that Ahab and I, next week now at this point, we're going to be in San Francisco, Alameda, San Francisco. So all the information is on that flyer. So if you can make it out uh, on that date, uh, we look forward to seeing you. So God bless you. Thanks for watching.